Honestly, I've never cried and yelled at a book so much in my life and I'm just I'm not emotionally stable eh. Hey guys, Ashley here today I am doing my full review of Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Maas. I cannot believe this is the last Thorne Glass book I will be ever reviewing. What? So if you don't know, Kingdom of Ash is the final book in the Thorne Glass series. The end of a wonderful era. My favorite series. I'm just going to dive straight in. I'm not even going to go into non-spoilies because we have a lot of content to cover. Obviously, I went crazy. I don't know how to process these feelings. This is like the first time I'm talking about it to anybody because nobody has finished the book yet and I finished this less than 24 hours ago there's literally still water damage at the end for when I was crying like ugly crying all over this book so let's get into this review where I will just be complete and utter trash I hope you're ready I have a lot of notes when I mean I took a lot of notes I took a lot of notes I have 13 pages of notes so let's go if you have not read this book please leave what are you doing here bye 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 all right yes yeah, so like I said I have 13 pages of notes for the 13 members of the 13 that died too soon. Oh, it's it's too soon. Oh, but why? So the beginning of Kingdom of Ash, we start off with different POVs. First, we are with Adian and Lysandra. They are in Terrison trying to speak with Daryl to rally the forces, figure out what to do for the upcoming Morath army that's about to freaking stomp on their asses. It's been two months since the events of Empire Storms. First of all, two months. Girl, what? And Adian, for whatever reason, is so pissed at Lysandra. I totally forgot. I'm like, why? Why is everyone so angry? That's right, because Empire Storms ended in such a shitty shit storm. Everyone's so angry, holding all these horrible grudges. They need to get over it. Adian is mad at Lysandra. You know, she's impersonating Aelin now because Aelin is trapped with Maeve in that coffin with that mask. And, but he's angry at her because she didn't tell or share this plan with anybody else except for Aelin. Yo, yeah, Rowan also didn't know about his plan, and that's literally his wife and his mate that might possibly die. And he ain't angry. He is not holding a grudge. Adian, he can't even look at her. Get over it. Stop being angry. Oh. <laughs> then we move on. A lead is with Lorcan and Rowan and Gavriel. They are just roaming around cities trying to find any clues and interrogate any people. Where's Maze? whereabouts? Where's Aelin? Where can you find her? They searching for you, girl. Don't give up. And again, a lead in Lorcan. Can we get over it, please? He was blood sworn to Maeve. He didn't have control over that. What did you expect him to do? And he even tells her, I was not crawling towards Maeve at the end in Empire Storms on the Beach. He was crawling towards Aelin and she's still just like, mm. Okay, and even Gabriel's like, it's the truth, you know, and she's still just like, eh. And girl is having her cycles, and she thinks Rowan and Gabriel are stripping pieces of their shirts to give to her, these linen pieces to give to her for her cycles. Little does she know, it's Lorcan. Lorcan is literally ripping up his clothes for you, and you're just not giving him the time of day. Oi, what is wrong with these people? Can we not just... Then we move on to my boy Dorian. He's with Manon. They're trying to find the Crockins. Okay, first of all, if you didn't watch my video I did a couple days ago, I released a whole series recap and why I believe Dorian is a freaking Valg demon. Still believe it. Don't fight me. So I hashtagged that receipts and boy, were there a lot of receipts in here. So yeah, like I said, they're looking for the Crocken, but then Dorian kind of like slips away. He goes into the forest, takes out his sword, and he puts it in the ground to summon Gavin and he asks. He literally Ask Gavin if he's human. Hello, receipts, receipts. Had Sire Dorian why possessed by a Valg demon? What did that make him? Receipts. Hello, he's a Valg demon. That's what I make him. And he literally asked Gavin. He's like, "Am I human?" And Gavin's like, "That is not for me to tell you the answer." And I'm like, "Boy is a demon. He is a demon." And then Manon and Dorian are having this weird sexual relationship. Yeah, but then there's a quote: "Even though they were undeclared, their bedrolls still wound up beside." Each each other. I love but not at Dorian so much. Okay, then Rowan, we move to Rowan. He has a dream about Aelin. They have like five children. Boy, boy got busy. They got like five kids. Then we move on to Aelin's chapter. She's being tortured. She's with Maeve. Karen is torturing the heck out of her. I knew this would be tough to read. I didn't realize how tough it would be because, you know, Aelin is so strong. She's been through so much. When Karen took that hammer and whacked her knee with it, he literally... 
Mm, that was a lot for me. I I cried. It was really hard to read. And Fenris is there, but Fenris can't do anything about it because he's blood sworn to Maeve, so he can literally just stand there and watch her in his wolf form. But they had this like blinking communication. He blinks four times. He's like, I'm here. I'm with you. This is real. Then we get to Kale's chapter. I have a soft spot for this boy. So as soon as I read Kale, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> the real tea here, people, is when it's Irene and she goes, Irene's hand drifted across her abdomen and lingered. Bitch, what? Is Irene pregnant? She is. But me then, I was like, oi, what's happening? All right, back to Manon and Dorian. So a bear attacks Manon, and the bear actually turns out to be those spiders from Tower of Dawn, but it's a spider that she stole spider silk from, and, and the same spider that Lysandra's uncle had also encountered all those years ago that stole those 20 years from his life. But then the spider shapeshifts into a woman, a small girl, child, weird thing, and I'm like, these spiders can shapeshift. This is weird. I don't trust a hoe. Spider's trying to convince them I know where the crocken are. Dorian's like, no, 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 we should trust her. Boy, no, you should not trust her. This is a bad idea. Do not go with this weird little witch thing that they call Silene because you know Dorian all of a sudden he's just a truth seeker. He had his sword that's blessed and anytime he puts his hand on it, if it's warm that means the person's telling the truth. If it's cold, it's not. And Silene's speaking, he touches his sword and he's like, nope, nope, she's telling the truth. Let's go with her. Let's trust this little spider vow demon. Let's not trust her. What are you doing? Also, this whole part is just really funny because Dorian, even though he's taller than all of him, he's just like this mighty little king with all these badass witch the 13 and i just imagine this tiny little king with all these witches being authoritative and i'm like squad new squad hello hi and he's like speaking in this like demanding king voice i'm like you go dorian you're a king and that king voice sends chills down manan manan and dorian what's her ship name minorian donan i I don't know. Okay, flashback to Maeve. She's still torturing Aelin. She brings her to their room. They're in Dornell, which I could have figured out. It took Rowan and them forever to figure out they were in Dornell. And I'm like, it's so obvious. Was this not common knowledge? I thought we knew that she was in Dornell, but apparently not. So they're in her throne room. Oh, Fenris and his brother, Connell. You think Fenris is about to die? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't need this. I don't need the first death in this book. And then Connell horns the sword upon himself and kills himself. Aelin loses it and she, I I forgot she like either flings magic or throws something at Maeve and it lightly scratches her on the cheek and she sees her blood and her blood's black but then it quickly turns red. Aelin, yes, Maeve is a vow demon queen bitch. Hello, see it, but she can't see it because she's thought of delusion. She doesn't know what's real. <sighs> the frustrations, the frustrations. And then Maeve tells Aelin that Rowan and them have been spotted in Terrison. And then Aelin's like, oh, Rowan, he's not coming for me. I had hope. Girl, he is coming for you. Chill. And then we're back with Adian and he is in the middle of fighting the forces of Morath. It's like a shit show. And they receive a messenger that arrives with a note from Daryl. And who's the messenger? Who it is? My boy, Knox. Owen, I love Knox Owen. You remember Knox Owen? Selena Zardothian's little thief friend from the King's Championship. Knox, Knox. And we're about to Kale. He's with the Coggin siblings, with the Rooks. They're about to go to Aniel. Then we go back to freaking Aelin. She's being tortured some more. They're giving her Gloriella. And I'm like, oh my god, this is full circle because she's enslaved in Dovier, slavery. Remember that time she got drugged by Gloriella in Crown of Midnight? They're using Gloriella to drug her. Full circle. So Manon and Dorian, they follow Silene, which again, bad idea. They find the Crocken thanks to her. Manon finds out that her great-grandmother, Glennis, is still alive. But then the yellow legs find them and they attack. It was all Manon's plan. She lied. She sent them here. It was to gain the Crocken's trust. Dorian knew it because he put his hand on his little truth-seeking magic crystal ball sword thing. And it was like, it turned cold, so he knew she was lying. And then Dorian goes to talk to Silene privately. Since Silene took 20 years of Lysandra's uncle's life, she also gained his shifting abilities because he's a shifter that's why she can shift so Dorian wants to learn how to shift and I'm like boy Dorian wants to learn how to shift also when he was fighting in that battle against the yellow lake boy is so dang powerful now like where did all this power come like he's more powerful than Aelin by the end of it craziness what but he wants to learn to shift so he tries to steal Silene's magic and then he kills her dang boy Dorian is turning to the dark side because why because he's a demon dark side Dorian is a demon receipts so they're back with Adian. They're trying to decide where to put their forces, either on the border or up in Orinth. These old men, these lords, I wanted to shoot them. They are so freaking stubborn, especially Daryl. I liked him 
at the end, beginning, Daryl, not a fan of you. Lysandra shows up with them, shifted into Aelin form. She is Aelin. And then Nox sees her from like across the room and gives weird eye contact with her. But of course, Lysandra doesn't know who Nox is. That was when Aelin was Selena Serdothian. She does not recognize Nox. And I'm like, no. <laughs> And then they get another messenger, and this messenger that comes in is a Valg demon. How did none of you sense that this man, this messenger, was a Valg? But he comes in and he immediately sniffs out Lysandra and realizes that she's not Aelin. He sends a message back to Erewhon, so Erewhon's forces know that Aelin is not in Terrison like everyone is saying. And I'm like, great, we're all screwed. Lovely. <sighs> Nox eventually catches up with Lysandra again. He talks to her, he's like, look, I know you're not Aelin. And she's like, what? And he's like, she was a very good friend of mine. We knew each other in the championship as Selena Sardothian. I just, anytime I mention Selena Sardothian, like, it's Aelin, but I get really emotional, kind of like, oh, such simple assassin, badass times. Okay, so now we're with Irene and Kale again. They're in Annie L. Irene is meeting Kale's stupid father. Kale and Dorian have horrible fathers. His father's not standing for it. He's like, mm, you just married this healer, whatever. At least it's better than that other one, that swaggering assassin. <gasps> this... You know I'm Kalena trash. Rowan and Aelin, OTP, but any mention of Kale and Selena, my heart, my heart goes weak. I'm just like, ooh, that, ooh, mmm, mmm. Like how awkward, hi. And Irene's not taking it. Irene stands up for herself, speaks to the Lord of Aniel. I'm like, Yes, girl, you go, you speak back to him, you don't take no shit. Back to Maeve. Here's this news that there is the presence of Valgs in Dora now, and they have collars. She wants to take it and put it on Aelin, and I'm like, no, 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 but little does she know, it's Rowan, it's Rowan, and the rest of the squad coming for her. They implanted this lie among the town in Dora now. Okay, so this is where the stress begins. This is one of my favorite scenes. It's the rescue mission of Aelin. It was so stressful. The plan is to send a lead in. Okay, but Ali goes into town like so distressed, acting like some distressed lover maiden that Karen left behind. She's asking people for Karen and she covers these group of Fae. One of them she meets is Asar, which is Lurkin's ex-lover. The drama. The drama. She's like, hey, Karen is in that camp you just saw. So the plan is to infiltrate the camp, get Aelin out, and go. We're gonna go. But you know, of course, before the chapter is over, we don't get to that part. We're back at Dorian. He's practicing trying to shift. Boy, he's trying to shift. Who do you think you are? The new Lysandra. But this is where more receipts happen. Holland, who had been sired by a Valg infested man as well, had the demon possessed any traits to his brother? Had he been human? Bitch, what was he deep down? Rusty. I am so irritated that we did not see Holland in this book. I wanted to kill that little demon boy child. All right, back to Manon and Dorian. They're with the Crockins. But yeah, so Dorian and Manon are in the tent talking. Dorian's all pissed at Manon and she's like, it doesn't make you weak if you care. I care and then he's like I care about you and I'm like oh my Dorian Manon feels like yes he cares about you hi when she leaves your eyes are brown like boy boy shifted his eyes to brown get it since he opened up his feelings to Manon he's also opening up his powers it allowed him for his eyes to finally turn brown because his eyes are blue and he's trying to shift and his eyes change colors that was a big moment I'm like ooh boy boy's powerful boy's gonna destroy the world demon all right now we are back to the exciting part Aelin awakes we find out where she is She's in the camp. Yes. Don't you worry, girl. The squad's coming for you. They're going to come rescue you, get you out of this torture. Freaking ah. Karen is torturing her. She's on this table. There's fire underneath her. Burn her alive. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do it. But then Fenris, he can't take it. She's about to burn. And Fenris, he gets up. He starts to move, which is a big deal, remember, because he's blood sworn to Maeve. And when you're blood sworn, you literally, you're frozen. You can't move. Broke the blood oath. When you break the blood oath, you death. Oi. Fenris, you're so, you're so brave. I just, he, I was so stressed. <laughs> but yeah, he's fighting, he's fighting Karen, and then Aelin, she escapes, she's running, she's running, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so stressed. She's fighting all the people, and I'm like, she's gonna die. But wait, we forget Aelin, badass assassin. This assassin girl, she's gonna make it, she's gonna run. You can hear Rowan's hawk crying, and I'm like, oh my god, can you imagine how she felt hearing that hawk crying? And then freaking, oh, Lorcan spots her, and he's trying to send his power his call to Rowan, but he's too far away, so he doesn't even know that Lorcan has Aelin, and I'm like, oi, oi, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. And then they finally get Aelin, she's made it, Fenris is still at the camp, and they go back, they find Fenris, he uses his wind power to block out any sound so he can torture him. See, their empire is running Queen of Shadows, Rowan says something along the line of, if anyone would ever take a whip to you, I would skin them alive. So what does he do to Karen? Because remember, Karen whipped Aelin on that beach in Empire Storms, he blocks out the sound, closes the tent, and skins that bitch. 
bitch alive. Oh, that is what you deserve. Hello. I was crying at this part so much. And Aylin's just in the forest and she's screaming and she's like, take it off. She's literally screaming like, take it off, take it off. Locked in these chains and they can't take it off. And she's literally like tearing her skin apart, trying to remove the helmet. Ooh, that was really hard to listen to slash read. Hearing her scream over and over again, take it off. I just, they finally are able to take it off though. They use word marks to take it off. And she burns her clothes off. All of her scars are gone. Whoa. Because these scars tell a story of Aelin's life. They remind her of everything she's been through in the slave mines. They remind her of Sam. They remind her of Nehemia. They're all gone. The history of Selena Sardothian is just erased from her body. That shook me. Her and Dovier's slave mine scars from being whipped on her back are gone. What? And then, okay, so then we have Fenris. They rescued Fenris. He's about to die. And then Aelin offers him the blood oaf. She offers him the blood oaf and he lives. He lives because she's like, I will you to live. Boy, me and my friend talked about this. We knew we were gonna happen. We're like, Aelin is gonna offer the blood oath to all of the cadre. It's happening. It's happening. And then Rowan's like, welcome to the court, pup. I love, I just, I don't know how to handle any of this. And then we're back with Dorian. He's summoning Gavin again. And who does he, who's he greeted by? Caltain Rompierre. Manon sees it. She sees what he plans. This boy plans to go to Morath and retrieve the keys and like sacrifice himself. And I'm like, no, why can't we just wait for Aelin? Why can't we just do this together? He's a risk taker in this book. And I'm like, I like your integrity, but I'm also like, boy, need to chill. And she's trying to like convince him not to go to Morath. He's like, you're not ready to go to Morath. Fine, you want to prove yourself and go to Morath and be our spy. And Dorian's like, fine, but you you can find yourself another tent to sleep in. Why are people so angry in this book? What, is, they just, the world is about to like end. Stop being angry, just love. Back to Aelin and Rowan and the rest of the squad. The little folk appear and they guide them toward this cave to be safe because although they've escaped the camp, there's still a lot of them like after them after that. They go into this cave, it's a safe place. Aelin finally wakes up, she wants to take a bath in this like ancient lake and I'm like, okay, you do you. And then this boat appears pulled by these weird blind creatures. I don't know. And Lorcan's just sitting here like, throwing sass at Aelin. The nerve of this boy. Aelin just got tortured and she's fine but she's not fine. The nerve of this boy to be thrown Sass. Why should we trust you? <laughs> I'm like, boy. But he gets its answer. The little folk appear. They bring Mab's crown to the surface. She's not only Brandon's heir, but she's also Mab's too. Fairy queen of the West. What? And then so as they're on this boat to find all this gold, bitches are like pocketing all this gold. Oh, these things are after us. We're trying to escape, but might as well, you know, get some riches while we're here. As Aelin's sifting through all the gold, she finds two rings and she places it on her finger and Rowan's finger. And it's like we're seeing this wedding that never happened. I was so emotional. And now they have their little wedding rings and I'm like, ah. But it's like they're saying vows and they're like to whatever end. And he's like to whatever end. And I'm like, oi, oi. Oi. <laughs> and then back to Kale and Irene. They're at NEL. They're preparing for battle. Kale's talking to his father and he's like, your wife is pregnant. And then Kale's like, what? Because apparently the king notices these things more. Ah, uh, Kale knows, Kale knows. So Irene is pregnant. Ha. Uh. All right, then Rowan and crew and squad, they made it to the boat. They're going across the ocean. They're on the boat. They're having a talk. She's like, we're mates because they haven't really like discussed that. They've only really heard it from other people. They haven't said it to each other one-on-one. -on -one. And she's like, do you regret it? No, boy. No, he does not regret it. And then they like have sex and it's amazing. And I'm like, this is the sex scene I asked for. Not that weird Empire Storms beach fire spooey flame thing. It was a nice scene. I had all the feels. And then it was like claiming him as he claimed her with their little bite marks. And I'm like, eh. All right, but moving on to after all that fun, tough, sexy times, we go on to the deck and she confronts Lorcan. And then she's like, do you plan to join us in this war? And he's like, I'm certainly not there to enjoy the weather. This boy, I freaking... I love Lorcan Salvatore. He is the sassiest bastard, and I just. Mm. And then Aelin asks him for the blood oath. Well, not because she wants him, but she's doing it for Elid, and she can't trust him also. She's like, take this blood oath, or you will never be allowed to basically see Elid ever again or step into Terrasen. So he takes the blood oath. Fenris is on the side, and he's like, God spare us. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Fenris, you're. They're just. Oh, squad is so funny. Everyone's so funny. And then Aelin's kind of like whispering and she's like, I'm doing this for Elite so you can be with Elite. And he's like, that's not really a possibility anymore. And Aelin's like, trust me, it is. It is a possibility. And then it says something like, he shut down that hope that filled his chest. I'm like, boy, you love her. You love her. And then back to Dorian and the witches. Dorian goes into the fairy and gap like they planned. He shifts successfully into like unrecognizable human and he infiltrates that and he does discover that the matrons are not after the 
Omega. So Manon and crew, they go to Omega. So they go to the Omega. Petra Bluebud is there. All the other witch clans. And she's trying to convince them like, hey, join our cause. Join us to fight against Harrison for a better world. And the speech that she gave was just so inspirational. Girl was badass. It's like she left the child of not war, but peace. The tears were falling. We've just come such a long way. So Kayla and Irene, they're in the battle. Morath is approaching Annie L. Every time Morath approaches Annie L or Harrison, I'm just like, they are not prepared for this. They have so many forces. There's no way they're gonna die. As soon as all hell is about to break loose and we were losing hope, a horn sounds and who is it? It's Hazar and she's brought the army. Iconic, iconic, woo! Moving on to the other battle in Terrison. AD and Lysandra are fighting those forces at the battle in Paranth and they're losing. There's just too many of Morath's forces. There's no way. And they're all pounding their swords on their shields to create all the sound. And then Morath comes on the ice and the ice breaks and they all fall in there. And I'm like, yeah, bitch, die. But that's only like a couple of thousands of them and they have like so many forces. I'm like, this is not gonna work. It's not enough. Even though that ice cracked and killed all of them, it's not enough. Everyone starting to give up. Everyone's starting to lose hope and draw back. They're not fighting confidently. So what does Lysandra do? She goes and shifts into Aelin and appears in the middle of the battle and everyone's like, the queen has arrived. The queen is here. And I'm like, no, she didn't have any firepower. She's not Aelin. She's just a freaking mortal human being. She's gonna die. And these three Ilkin surround her and Adian sees her and he's running. He's running towards her. He's too far away. And he's like, I didn't mean it. I take it all back. I didn't mean any of it. I'm like, yeah, I knew this was gonna happen. As soon as someone is on the brink of death, they're gonna realize how stupid they've been acting this whole freaking book. I didn't mean it. I love her. Let me save you. They said the Iron Teeth Witches show up and I got really excited and I was like, oh my god, it's Manon. Freaking the other Iron Teeth Witches who are aligned with the Valk, they show up and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, is it? This is when Adian and Lysandra are gonna die. And they have the Witch Towers, those like freaking weapons that the witch is going to, to like yield themselves and they like destroys and like incinerates everything. And I'm like, no, 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 this is bad. Adian throws himself all in type of Lysandra as if that's gonna save anything. He's yelling, fall back in the text of the book. Fall back is in all caps, so you know it's serious. And then fire appears. And then the chapter ends, and then we move on. And I'm like, why? And then we're back to Kale. And he's in the tent with the Coggin siblings, with Irene, and then the person he least expected to enter the tent. And I'm like, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, this chapter is one of my favorite chapters in the whole book. Aelin freaking Galathinius walks in with the squad. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, yes. Like, I was so terrified when Irene would see Aelin for the first time that was gonna be Lysandra, and it's not. It's Aelin, Kale, and Aelin, me with my old Selena Kale heart over here. I'm like, ah! Aelin stops and just like stares at him and like they hug and she's like I knew you would I knew you could do it because he's walking and she's so happy and then they introduce their spouses to each other and Kale's like me and my wife Irene Westfall they have their reunion and Irene gives back the note that Aelin Selena had written for her and it's all folded over and she can see how many times she's read it and oh it's just so emotional and then Aelin introduces them into Rowan her husband and I'm like oi ha huh? we've come such a long way from like Kale hating her being so sad and now they're both here with their spouses and they're all happy Ooh, and then after talking Kale notices that she doesn't have her scars and of course he would notice again old Kale Lena feels over here he looks at her and he like she's like what and then she like looks at him he's like later and I'm like yeah y'all will talk later I love it I love the friendship I love everything that's going on hi and then Borte enters with Falcon remember Falcon is Lysander's uncle but nobody recognizes him because he's all of a sudden he's really young appearing I totally forgot since Silene the spider the bitch I didn't trust since she's dead since Dorian killed her remember in Assassin's Blade they said the only way he would regain his use is if the spider he had that contract with died she died so now he's young again everything's going great and then they tell Aelin that Maeve is a vow queen and she's like screaming and she's like I can't do this and I'm like no you can't do this how are you gonna do this I don't know how they're gonna defeat anything I'm just terrified can we go back to Lead and Lorcan they're fighting as usual just having the same stupid argument about how he was blood sworn to Maeve and she's like make me understand he's like understand what why do you keep going back to this make me understand how you were in love with this monster that is Maeve and it will make me understand how I did the same aka she just said that she loved him and I'm like oh my god oh my god and then she tells him doesn't care if he doesn't walk out of this battle and I'm like what are you doing go you're gonna regret this what is wrong with you 
God! So Lysandra wakes, she's with Adian in the tent after that battle, and you know, Adian tells her and wakes her, like, he apologizes for everything, but of course Lysandra does not forgive him, and then he's just like, I meant what I said at School's Bay, remember how he's like, I'm gonna marry you, and then she's just like, not having it, I'm like, get over the grudges, I. <laughs> then fast forward, Irene tells Kale about the baby, and I'm like, ah, and then I'm thinking, I'm like, oh my god, if Irene dies, so does her baby, and then so does Kale, this whole family will just die, and then Aelin confronts Kale's father, Dorian, he shifts into a woman, and he walks by Manon and she's just like, what? The three matrons find them because freaking Silene was a spy. I told them not to trust a bitch. Maeve sent them to Manon. She ends up killing the yellow legs heir. She lets the blue blood heir go. And then she also lets her grandmother flee. And I'm like, why did you not kill a bitch? Don't they know? This is kind of going back to haunt you. And then Manon's like, I am Manon Blackbeak. I am not afraid. I'm like, ooh, the parallels to I am Selena Sadothian and I will not be afraid. All right, now we're here, people. We're at this battle at NES and it stressed me the freak out and I just mm. so all hell is breaking loose Aelin emerges gold armor the armor that's on the dust jacket for the Barnes and Noble edition it's so pretty I think this isn't Kale's perspective when he sees her and he's like oh how far they were both from Rifthold from the assassin and the captain oi my feels I just ha ah, I'm so sad the series is ending I can't believe any of it things could not get worse the dam there's a dam that is over Annie L and they had said before like why don't we just release this dam and it'll kill everybody Body, but it's too much. If the dam is released, the water will literally flow through all of Annie L and wipe out everybody. No one will survive. Literally, they know the freaking Moraf soldiers have been at this dam hammering away. They're about to release this dam, and now everyone's like running to their lives to like try to escape, get out of the battlefield, get out of the plane. And then a lead joins. They're all safe. Squad, Irene, Nezrin, they're all there. And then a lead comes, and she's like, "Where is Lorkin?" And then she's like, "Where is Lorkin?" Because Lorkin was on the battlefield and he got attacked by all these Moraf soldiers. And she's like, where's Lorcan? She goes, she steals Kale's horse. She goes through playing, but the dam's also coming. So it's like the stress, like is Lorcan dead? The water's about to wipe out the whole town. I was so stressed. And hearing Elite scream Lorcan's name, she's like, Lorcan, Lorcan. And I'm like, ooh. I was crying this whole journey, this whole chapter. I was crying because it was just so emotional. And then she finds him. The Lorcan's a heavy ass bastard. And she's like, get up. You need to get up. But he can't get up because he's so injured. His back and his stomach is like split open. She's yelling at him to get up and they get on the horse. They're riding. They're not gonna make it. The water is about to come. They can hear the dam breaking. And then he whispers her ear. He like kisses her and he's like, you need to let me go. And I'm like, what are you doing? What? are you doing boy you won't be able to make it with me there's too much weight if i go off you'll be able to make it on time and he's like i love you i've loved you ever since you picked up that axe we're defending yourself against the foul demons and empire storms and i'm like no and then the girl rips on to his shoulder or his arm like slash on like talons and she's like no no she like refuses to believe it and they make it they make it they make it and then they're watching and then Rowan looks over and Aelin is gone she took a rook she stole a rook she's out there in the battle and little did we know she had been tunneling into her powers for those past three months and she uses all her power on this freaking damn like tsunami wave that's coming towards them and like spews her fire and that allows it to stop she's depleted herself that's all the power. She can no longer use that amount of power on Warath when they go to Terrasen. It's fine. Oh my god, I'm losing my voice. Dang, that was stressful. <laughs> that was too much, y'all. And then we're back in with Dorian and Manon. After that stressful time, we're back with Dorian and Manon. He's sitting in his tent. It's a day before he's about to go to Morath. Boy, why are you going to Morath by yourself to retrieve this key? Manon comes. She's like, what would it take for me to convince you not to go? And he's like, I don't know. It would take a lot. And then she's like, because I don't want you to go. Girl, showing some feelings. She's moved so far from the stone cold bitch and then like you know they have sex and that's just great i just the smut in this book was really great guys it was just really great after she's like holding his hand which he says the most intimate thing they've ever done Manon, cold ass bitch witch is holding this boy's hand she's trying to convince him not to go and she's like well you could stay here we could forge an alliance she's basically asking him to marry her dorian's like in his head he's almost said yes he was almost that selfish after they have sex and they wake up she cuddles with him when she wakes he isn't there i'm dead <laughs> and then we're back with Adian and Lysandra. They're still battling Morath. It's not looking good. And then this fire comes. This fire. And I'm like, oh my god, it's Aelin. But how's the Aelin? She was just in Annie L. How did she make it to here so fast? But who 
is it? Who is it that shows up to battle? It's freaking Rolf the Private Lord, this son of a bitch. <laughs> and he's with the Mycenaeans and they have these fire lancers because remember the Valg do not like fire. Flaming all these bitches. And then back with Dorian, he's in Mora. He was a bird. He flew there. He buried the keys like in the forest far away. And I'm like, that's not a good idea either. But you know, that's what we did. And he turns into a mouse and he's like sneaking around. He finds Erewhon and Maeve talking. This is where he also discovers that Maeve is a Valg demon. Maeve finds him and stomps him on his mousy tail. He's like, okay, let me forge this fake marriage alliance with Maeve and convince her that I'm with her and saying, I will marry you and then we can rule the world and we will defeat Erewhon. And I'm like, this is a stupid ass idea. She is not going to fall for this. But I mean, apparently she does fall for it. I'm like, I guess Maeve is a dumb bitch. I'm also like, how is Dorian just so casually talking to Maeve right here in this hallway? This is not right. This is weird voodoo shit, man. <laughs> and then Maeve at some point says to Dorian again, and Rasid, she's like, you are different indeed. I wonder if some of the vow did cross over when your father bred with your mother. Rasid, Dorian does successfully sneak into Erewhon's room. He sees the third key is in another girl's arm, kind of like Caltaine's was. They have the three keys. How stupid is Maeve to believe that Dorian is stupid to agree into this weird agreement that they have? You a dumb bitch. Dorian reveals that he's been lying this whole time and he takes hold of her mind. There's only one one witch who will be my queen. <gasps> Manon, there's only one witch and you're not her, bitch, witch, bitch. Freaking throws her aside and destroys Morath, leaves it in ruins. Yas Dorian, our boy, has the three keys and now he's flying. He turns into a freaking wyvern and Adian tells Lysandra that he loves her and they hold hands. There's more witches coming and I'm like, shit, it's over, death, we're gonna die. But then Manon, Blackbeak in the house. And Manon's like, we came to honor alien gal Phineas for a better world. Yes, queen. Yes. And Adian's like, if I don't die tomorrow, can I kiss you? And Lysandra's like, huh? And I'm like, and then we're back with alien squad. They are in the, I believe they're in the Oakwald forest, whichever forest is close to Endovier. They're about to pass Endovier, which, oh my gosh, can you believe it? This has come full circle. It's like we started at Endovier and then we ended up back at Endovier. She's about to pass Endovier with Kale. She's in the tent with Rowan. He's giving her a new tattoo because along with all her scars, her tattoos also disappeared. It's like air fire again. He's giving her a tattoo. And then as they're about to pass Endovier, they see this wyvern come and then all the rooks are on high alert. Bursts of light. Hello, Dorian. I am here. I am now a wyvern. Hello. And then like him and Kale have such a nice reunion. We're back with Adian in the battle. Now is there with the 13. Badass. Everyone is there. Freaking Iskra. Yellow legs. Her wyvern puts its jaws on a Braxos and I'm like, no, this can't happen. Everyone's about to die. And then Petra Bluebug comes and saves the day. Yes, Petra. And they're in the air. They're soaring down. Like, swoops up last minute. And Iska Yellow Legs is dead. That's what you get, bitch. No one messes with the Braxos. No. So then Manon goes back to the battlement tower. She realizes the other INT witches, they finally have their third witch tower up. Her whole 13, Asterin, everybody. They go and they sacrifice themselves. And they go into that witch tower. And they stop her. And they all the 13 dies. They go to dust. Seeing the 13 die, I just... Oh Oh my god, this poster, I know this poster was drawn before this book came out, but look, this is the Manon and the 13, and they kind of look like dead spirits in the background foreshadowing because they're dead. No! <laughs> Going back to Aelin, they're trying to decide whether she should forge the keys now because she has all three word keys now. Should she forge the lock now and die or wait, go help the forces in Terrison and then forge the lock? And she's like, let's take it to the vote. Excuse me, you want to take your life to a vote? And they all vote and they all vote to do it now. Why? No. And then Rowan's, you know, he's in the tent with Aelin. They're fighting, they're arguing. He's like, don't do this. You can't do this. I refuse to accept it. And he's like, wait, light bulb, what if you and Dorian forge the lock together? And I'm like, finally, I have been saying this theory literally forever that her and Dorian should forge the lock together. You think of this now, Rowan? Boy, first you don't look in Dorian now, and then you figure that he's slow today. Him, Kaol, Dorian, and Aelin go into the forest together. They go into near Endovier, and this is gonna happen. This is the moment we've all been dredging. It's happening. The lock is forging. This is what we've been waiting for. I mean, not really, because I'm not looking forward to it. And then she asks Dorian, she's like, do you want Kaol to come? And he's like, yeah. 
dress and I'm like, uh, OG squad in the house. But yeah, so they forge the lock. They're in this like word stone circle thing. They're in this weird dimension. Who shows up? The king of Otterlin? What? He's telling them like, I can take Dorian's place. Hey, Maul's bloodline runs through mines too. And he's like, nameless is my price. Yeah, none of you people know my name. Erewhon took away his name, like the knowledge of his name. He takes Dorian's place. She literally pushes Dorian out. All the gods are there. It's about to happen. Erewhon's about to be gone. And she's like, wait, no, let's trade Elena for Erewhon. You can keep Erewhon here, but let Elena's soul go into the afterlife so she shall be with her mate and family. The whole does not deserve this. She is the whole reason why you're in this man. Don't trade it. And then the god, they decide to screw her over. Yeah, and she takes Elena and like crushes her life force so she doesn't exist anywhere. Basically, forging the lock did nothing for us. Freaking Mala gives some of her power to Aelin. So Aelin doesn't die. This is where the shit gets juicy and meta. So she forges the lock. She's falling in between all these worlds. She can't find her way back. And as she's falling through these worlds, she sees something. She passed through a world of snow-capped mountains under shining stars. And I'm like, oh my god, this is it. This is the... This is the thing to the Akatar universe. No, no, no. I'm not ready. But yeah, she passed over one of those mountains where a winged male stood beside a heavily pregnant female. <gasps> it's Reese and Pharaoh. <laughs> and Pharaoh's pregnant. I just like cannot handle it. And then Reese blasts his power to help save her. Tumbles out of that world. Whoa, whoa. We just saw Reese and Pharaoh. So after Aelin's out, she is officially forever immortal in her fae form. Okay, now we're back to the battle in Terrace. Ren's grandfather dies, and an Adi and Lysandra kiss, and something about this scene stood out to me, and I'm like, what does this mean? Because Adian is like a demi fae, right? He's not full fae, and he's like, he's like not as a prey, but his partner, his mate. Is this a metaphorical mate sense, or do you mean mate? This is never clarified, and I'm confused. <laughs> They're back in the battle, and who comes riding out of the horizon, it's Aelin. She's riding on the Lord of the North on the stag. The gates, they're trying to infiltrate the gates. I think it's the West Gate that they're trying to close and it's not closing. They're, everything's about to break loose. So Adian like runs to the gate and then Gavriel comes and they finally make up and Adian finally acknowledges him as his father. And it's just like, uh, Gabriel runs off past the gate, successfully helps seal the gate, but then dies. It's like this panoramic cinematographic shot. We see Gabriel just lying on the ground, face up with his eyes open, with all these Valg demons around him. Oh, Gabriel's death destroyed. I cried so hard, especially when Adium went to go visit him after. First at 13, now this. We reach such symbolic character development moments, and then this? Not fair! Oh my gosh, I just realized since the 13 died. Died, and Braxos's maid also died. Man, freaking. And then this like darkness comes over the valley and Maeve and Erewhon are finally here. Aelin goes to meet them. They don't know that she doesn't have any power. She's kind of like putting up this front. She should have died here. Let's be real. Maeve and Erewhon, they should have just blasted her ass, but they didn't. And in reality, she should have died. And then in the midst of this, Aelin's facing off with them. A lead goes to get Irene and they go get Dorian. And I'm like, ooh, what are they planning? Erewhon senses that Irene's a healer. The healers are the only ones who can defeat him and take that Valg demon off of them. For some reason, this like freaks him out and he goes to her. He's all like, you think you can defeat me? And then Irene's like, I'm not Irene. Bleh. And then he tries to move. He can't because they put like a word mark circle around him. He's stuck. And then they take the sword. And they stab him. Irene kills Erewhon. She sucks the demon out of him. He's gone. But before he kills him, Dorian is like asking him for his father's real name. And his father named him Dorian. The only time he could remember who he really was was when he held his firstborn son. So he named him his name, Dorian. That's just so sad. We're back to Aelin. She's with Maeve. Only facing off Maeve. And then... Rowan shows up with the rest of the cadre and Maeve like shoots this like blast black power to them. She's holding them all in this illusion. Lorcan is there with a lead. He's like, I think you're my mate. Like he whispers it in the like illusion dream and this is the only time that is mentioned. I'm like, okay, are you also mates? Is everyone mates? What is going on? But then Aelin like puts her fire on all of them to blast them out of the illusion and then Fenris stabs Maeve. Aelin puts the ring 
on her finger and by bitch turning to dust and then she cuts off her head and stabs it in the ground yes Maeve is dead everyone is dead woo everyone is shouting Irene's name they're like Irene 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 and I'm like yes it's over Lysandra finally meets her uncle that's a happy time flash forward back to Dorian he's in the tower where Erewhon just died and he asks he puts his hand on the Maris and he's like am I human and it warms and I'm like boy no you had to be a bad demon I feel like the sword was being like you decide who you want to be so Dorian is finally okay and accepting that he wants to be human and so that is why the sword is like okay yes we're turned warm for you but I still think he's a demon I still think he has a little bit of Val inside of him I refuse to believe the truth oh and then like this is the part where I said I was crying when they're visiting Gabriel's body and Aelin still offers him the blood oath uh and then we're Aline and Lorcan and she's like ask me to stay and he's like stay and then he's like ask me to go to Paranth with you and he's like I'll go to Paranth with you and then she's like ask me to marry you and he's like I will marry you yes and boy gives up his immortality I will bind myself to you so that way we will not live one day without each other but also like one day they're all gonna die and Aelin and all of them will still be living it up and I'm not prepared for that we can't have mortal and immortal people in the squad everyone needs to die at the same time I will not stand for it then we have Aelin's coronation which was just beautiful I don't know if it was just me when they were saying the coronation vows Ooh, this is kind of like a wedding like hi this is Rowan and Aelin's wedding we didn't get to see and now here's where the ugly crying started where everyone's saying goodbye to everybody and I'm like oh then the part that destroyed me because this is told from Rowan's perspective everyone had said goodbye except for Aelin, Kaol, and Dorian and it's like them three in a circle and Rowan kind of backs off to give them some space and they're all just staring at each other and she throws her arms around him and she's like I love you guys and it's like we started off with them three and now we're ending with them three. Oh my god no I cannot start crying right now thinking about it but it's just so sad even Kale's crying and he's like this is not the last time we'll see each other we'll see each other again it's not forever and, <sighs> and she looks to Dorian and she looks to Kale and she's like I wish you all the happiness and Dorian she looks at Dorian she's like you are a king now and I just <sighs> <sighs> like we started off in third of class and now it's just them three at the end they're saying goodbye to each other and oh why am I getting emotional <laughs> I just it's so so sad I had to go back and listen to the audiobook version of it and hear it that was such goodbye I dreaded the most and it was just as satisfying as I hoped it would be and I just can't get over the fact that it's over and then the ending we have like Aelin and Rowan you know and like they're looking and the flowers are starting to bloom again oh my god how did I forget about Manon and Dorian Aidy and Lysandra they're getting married hi some of the Rook Riders want to go where the waves are and they have Wyvern and Egg they want to train them and so Dorian asked her to oversee that and she's like oh well you know Otterland is only a couple days away flying from the waist and I'm like feel free to stop by every once in a while and this is right in front of Irene and Kale and then Irene's like why don't you two just get married and then Manon just like flies off and I'm like oh these two we need a short story in the back of one of their upcoming books where it's like a third of glass short story exclusive either Adian and Irene's Adian and Lysandra's wedding or Manon and Dorian anything and um it's over wow it's over i'm just i'm in a state of shock wow i think my favorite scenes let me see my favorite scenes were definitely when they were rescuing aelin from the camp when Ali was going after lorcan and kale and aelin reunited for the first time everything was just great and i'm such a mess all right guys that is the end of my kingdom of ash review it was really long i know thank you so much if you stayed all the way till the end and watched my trashy mess destructive self my voice is gone my wrist hurts from holding up this massive AF book. It's the last time I'll ever be reviewing a Throne of Glass book on my channel and it just hit me and I'm just I don't know what to do from here. I feel empty and I'm gonna be in such a huge reading slump after this. How do you read anything after reading this? No more Aelin, no more Rowan, no more Kale. I just Oh, it's been such a good series. I'm just so happy. Five out of five stars, duh. I loved how Sarah and she wrapped it up so nicely. It's just everything in this book I was just screaming at and I'm so emotional obviously from these tabs and it's all over and I don't know what to do with myself and my favorite series has ended. Damn. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and comment below everything. Comment everything. You want to discuss everything? 
discuss. I'm pretty sure I didn't leave anything I wanted to say out with my freaking 13 page of notes. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Oh my gosh, I, I don't want to end the video. Like ending the video is like, it's over. Oh, all right guys. My name is Ashley. This is Ashley Up Page. This has been my Kingdom of Ash review. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you. All right. Who's ready to reread the series? Too soon. <laughs> Never too soon, but really, let's reread the series.